welcome back for another 7 Caillou challenge called Shortest Word. Simple, given a string of words, return the length of the shortest word, or words if multiple words in that string have are tied for the shortest. String will never be empty, and you do not need to account for different data types. Yeah, okay. I think that second part's... Um, didn't need to be said, but um, you could check for empty if you want. You probably would in a real life scenario, but pretty clear. So this string, notice it's just a single string. They're not passing us an array of strings. So it's going to have white spaces that separate the words. And so you need to sort of um, be able to extract the various words contained within this single string to solve the challenge in case that wasn't clear. So go ahead and pause the video, give this one an honest attempt and come on back when you're ready. Let's get to it. So I'll do this problem first using the basic building blocks because this is a beginner-ish series. And then I'll show you a one line solution using link at the end if you wanna stick around for that. Okay, so let's sort of build this solution ourselves. The first part is converting the single string into a collection of words. And you may have seen me use a feature of strings called split, the split method. And I give it a character that I want to split by. In this case, since we're looking at words, I'm using a space character. Um, if you're working with a comma separated variable file, maybe you want to split by commas. But you can put whatever you want in there. Typical is a space. So when I do this, and you can look this up, use your search engine type C sharp string split, you'll land here. And I realized I do this a lot where I just say string split. And you may have noticed there isn't an overload specifically for that. And you may have been wondering how this works. And I'm not sure if I ever explained that, but real quick, let's go to the top of the document page for string split. And you'll notice, wow, lots of overloads here. You got lots of flexibility for using this. And I'm using one with just, I'm just passing a char, right? And you notice this one has a char, but it's got other things. And this one has a char, but it's got another parameter as well. Well, when you click on it, you'll notice that the second parameter is what we call a default parameter. Notice this weird syntax where you've got the equal sign. That's not what we usually encounter, right? So what this means is that if you don't provide this second parameter, they will automatically inject this value in for the second parameter. And that's why I get away with writing it the way I do, where I only put one parameter in here. I'm not writing comma and then putting uh, my string, what are they call string separate, string split options. I'm not even specifying it because it's none. If I needed something other than none, then I should specify that. But if you've ever wondered about that, that's what's going on. I, no magic. So good, when I call this method, if you wanna again look at the documents, you'll notice it returns a string array. And that is what I listed here. Called it words, I thought that was a very fitting name for it. So once we have the individual words, we can sort of go through, examine each one, and keep a running tab on what the shortest one is. So I'll make a counter variable here, let's say shortest length. And I'm going to initialize mine to negative one because that's just a symbol to me that the value hasn't been set yet. No word's gonna come back with negative one. That's an impossibility, right? It doesn't make sense to say a word has length negative one. So that's just how I know. I suppose alternatively you could use in 32, what's, I think it's called max value. And that's just the largest possible number that can fit in an a 32-bit integer, which I think is 2.1 billion, two and some change, 2.147 or something billion. You can look this field up if you want to see it. Um, if there were a word in here that was 2 billion letters long over that, then yeah, I suppose in theory you could run into trouble. I don't see how you wouldn't practice. And then if you knew that your string would never contain um, words over a certain length, you knew it would never be over 100, you could start with that. You just need some value, some initial value that um, won't be encountered in the, the data that you're using. I'm gonna stick with negative one for mine. 
And then it's a matter of iterating over the collection of words, right? We know a couple ways of doing that. You could use the int i equals zero, i is less than words.length plus plus i, right? This is the usual loop that we're accustomed to. Since I don't actually need to index into this collection, I much prefer here the for each variant of this, where I could say string word in words. I like this one much better in this case. So for each word, I'm going to check a couple things. I'm going to say, first of all, if shortest length is equal to negative one, that means we haven't encountered a word. We're on the first word, and whatever that word is, it should be the new shortest length, right? You got to start with some legitimate value. So we would say shortest length equals word.length. And then the general case is that you're not on the first word. Shortest length has already been populated with a an actual value. And then it would be if word.length is less than shortest length. It means you found a new shortest, right? So then you would update. It's actually going to be the same statement here. Um, yeah, and that covers it. And you can see how these have the same statements. So you could actually combine these. You could say if shortest length equals negative one or this, and maybe we'll do that when we clean up a little bit. But you can imagine as you go through the entire loop then, by the end, shortest length contains the value that you want. Return shortest length. Test invalid expression term on line five. What do we do? Oh, sure, I was showing you how it could have multiple parameters there looks good attempt is good so yeah let's clean this up a bit we could say since they're both executing the same logic I could say if shortest length is equal to negative one or the current word length is less than the shortest length then just update it that, that fits well enough. Good. Okay, so as promised, I will also show you a more advanced way of doing this using link. But make sure you're comfortable doing it this way too. So in advance, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the system link namespace so I can use those methods. And then if you want, Pause the video again and see if you can find the link method to do this. I'll give you a hint. You're going to start from here with splitting the words up into an array. And then from here, you want to find the minimum length. See if you can find an, an enumerable method that can do that. Like I said, keep these open. Keep the methods, enumerable methods open in some tab. You can scroll down. You find min. And then hopefully you ran into min by, which is what I'm going to use here. Returns the minimum value in a generic sequence according to a specified key selector function, which is what I want. I know it sounds a little cryptic, uh, but let's see. Actually, they might not have an example here, but that's okay. I'll give you an example we'll look at. What you need to know, um, we know that the this parameter isn't an actual parameter. It means you're going to call it on an I enumerable of some type. And so your actual first parameter is this function of source to key, key selector. And that's how we're going to tell it to, we're going to tell it how to determine a minimum. That's why I used min by instead of min. Min is more like when you just want the minimum element in the array and you don't need to specify any kind of, um, logic to go with it like if you have a bunch of numbers and you just want the lowest one you can call min on that min by gives us this opportunity to specify how the minimum should be determined returns the value with the minimum key in the sequence so remember we're working with strings right words that are strings so remember we're going to get a word back and that's going to be important for returning from our method so let's do this I'm going to delete this since we're not going to need that. 
All right, return string split. We know string split gave us that string array. It's an array of strings. So from there, uh, we know that arrays are enumerable. So I can call min by on it. And then I got to give it that function that we were talking about that says how to determine the minimum. So for my parameter, I'm going to call it word, right? Because we have an array of strings in each one. I think of it as a word, but use whatever variable name you want. This part isn't a keyword or anything. It's something you make up and name. It's like your parameters to your methods, right? That's what exactly what it is. It's a method parameter. They called theirs S, but you could have called it STR or anything. So with each word, then, we want to return the word's length. And so at this point, we found out that minby will return a string. It's whatever type our enumerable is. In this case, it's of type. It's an array of strings. So since they want the shortest length, this part gets us to the shortest word. So how would we close, finish the job, get the access the length property of that word? See how I'm kind of chaining these methods together? So hopefully that's clear to you. If not, this is more advanced. It's just something to um, start to observe and become comfortable with. It's okay if you don't follow all the way. So I'll go ahead and hit test. Good. Hit the attempt. And golden. I'm going to go with this. I think it's pretty clear what it does. Very short, expressive, clean. So I'm going to keep mine. You can submit the previous way if you like. Whatever is more comfortable for you. And then, um, sure, they did the same kind of thing here with min. That's fine. Um, this is more like our original way, right? You kind of go over each string. They, they start with max value, like I said. Um, instead of negative one, so you could do it that way too. Min, lots of min. I used min by. This one did some ordering first and then just took the first one. So you can imagine it split it into an array. It ordered them from shortest to longest with this order by and then um, transfer transformed right because after order by it was still a, a collection of words arranged from shortest length to longest length and then the select we know projects each element into a new form so instead of string words it projected them into a bunch of integral values their lengths and it just took the first one because they're already ordered from smallest to largest so you can see lots of ways of going about this here you know what to do if you have questions, hit me up. Otherwise, I appreciate you watching. I'll see you in another video. Thanks.